Hey guys. I live in Florida, so um, crazy thought about the coronavirus death rate. So as I'm sure you all know, the death rate has plummeted, which is good news on the surface, right? It's good news. And I just need help thinking through this logically, okay? Like, let's think through this logic. So when Trump tweeted the death rate has plummeted, specifically what he is referring to, uh, from what I have gathered, is the daily deaths of COVID in like April, I think at the peak, the highest day was around 2,500. And from um, just a few days ago, the daily deaths had continued to decrease since that time, pretty much. And we're about 250. So that's a 10, an order of 10 decrease in deaths. And so um, that's what he was referring to. And I even have a video that I put up that is called cases go up, deaths go down where I'm going over, not what Trump says, but the, um, Florida COVID dashboard and worldometers.info, which shows worldwide as well as, uh, as well as, um, countrywide and statewide. And then the Florida one does statewide and, and county in zip code. So that's cool. Uh, so I've been monitoring it on all that. And so, yes, the death rates have been going down now. When the death rates on worldometers are going down and when the death rates on the Florida COVID dashboard are going down, it doesn't mean the same thing um, as what Trump me meant. Death rate, if you were to just like take that word and, and no one would give you any specifics, like I would assume would the most likely definition, not the daily death cases, which did decrease by tenfold. He's, he's right. It's, I, I haven't checked in the last day or two, but in general. Um, but usually what you would mean is the percent of people with COVID who die. Okay. That's usually what it means is if you take a hundred people who have COVID, what percent of them are going to die with COVID? We'll say with COVID, not of COVID. And that's part of why I wanted to do this video. <laughs> okay. So what percent the running death percent in Florida was at like 6% for a while. Worldometers right now for the entire world, last I checked a couple of days ago, was 10% of uh, closed cases. Well, what does that mean? Because you're like, what? I thought it was just a flu. Well, um, I don't think it's just a flu. If you go back and look at some of my recent videos, I think it came from a lab. But anyways, um, closed case death rate specifically means that of all the people who had COVID, whether alive and they now are testing negative or dead from COVID or of COVID, with COVID, excuse me, what percent died? And um, so the death rate of closed cases w is the one that's around 10%. The death rate of open cases is lower, but you know, you can say that your grandma died of cancer but she could have that cancer for eight, 10, 12 years. I know one lady, elderly lady, who's had cancer for like 12 years, she just has been managing it. Um, but when that person dies, that's still from that cancer, usually, unless, but maybe not. I don't know. It's possible they could die from something else. And that's the point of this video. So if your, you know, grandma has cancer for 10 years and she's managing it, but she's 65 and she still drives and she's driving down the road and a car hits her, would you list that on the birth certificate as her dying of cancer? Or would you list that on the birth certificate if she died of a car accident? Um, the norm is to put she died of a car accident. However, we do know, and this is a confirmed thing, that during the peak specifically, and we need to find out if they're still doing this, okay? Because, um, but during the peak, there were multiple public statements by officials during press conferences that said, including Dr. Burks, um, Dr. Burks said this, that, thank you, Angel, for interrupting my video. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, including Deborah Burks, they stated that if you have tested positive for COVID um, and die, they will mark it as a COVID death. Now, I have defended that stance before because I think that the ultimate goal is, of course, to preserve life and it's a new virus and you don't know what you're dealing with and maybe they were erring on the side of caution. I don't know. I don't think they intentionally were trying to ruin everyone's life. They didn't create the virus. 
they didn't release the virus. So I don't blame the messenger, although a lot of people are blaming the messenger. I live in Florida, y'all, so yeah, my hair is just like a frizz bomb today. It's gonna rain every day this week, so you can tell by looking at my hair. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, I do believe that the cases have been inflated, even though I take this extremely seriously. I have been socially distancing. I wear a mask when I go to public, in, in public or whatever, or I'm near other people, um, which I just don't get near other people because so many people don't want to wear masks, and so I just don't go out. So thanks, guys. Um, but anyways, despite all that, I do agree, and because we know from multiple public statements that there's going to at least be some kind of overestimation of cases because, um, you know, grandma tested positive for COVID and she dies in a car accident on the way home from the hospital, you know, that's more of a car accident. Now, there are other times when I don't think it's an overestimation. For example, in the beginning, people would suddenly die of kidney failure and they would test positive for COVID, and that would get marked as a COVID death. Well, people were screaming about that. And I'm sorry, but I was saying it then and I'll say it now. COVID can cause kidney failure. So any severe virus that makes your body sick enough and your body's fighting so hard can cause organ failure. Kidneys, lungs, heart, liver, pancreas gets involved. It causes type two, type one diabetes now they're finding out. So I don't believe those particular circumstances were overestimating COVID cases. But there's another example that could be overestimating. Um, for example, I saw one woman's COVID story on YouTube and she was talking about her mother. Her mother was counted positive multiple times. I'm sure put into the system, I'm not sure, but I imagine it's possible her mother could have been put into the system multiple times as a separate case. For example, she got a chest x-ray and it was horrible and it was COVID lung, which looks unique. They marked that's they considered her positive she went later when she was able to get a test and she was counted positive then it showed up positive and then her mother later got an antibody test so we don't know if all three of those perhaps got counted so whereas the kidney failure and the diabetes and the heart attacks and the strokes i don't think that's overestimating cases because it's very possible until we know more which we are learning more and confirming but it's possible that COVID caused those deaths. So I think those some of those deaths should have been counted. So let's look at this logically. Are the death rates plummeting? Well, if the cases were being overestimated, okay, and the deaths were being overestimated in the beginning, that doesn't leave us with very good circumstance of <laughs> being able to read the data, right? But let's just say that the cases were overestimated and the deaths, now you can say the deaths caused by ventilator were caused by the ventilator. But those, and we understand that 88%, I under, I shared an article the other day on Facebook, that 88% of people on ventilators in New York in like March through April, April time died. And so those were marked as COVID deaths. Those people would not have been put on a ventilator if it weren't for COVID. So... It's so sad that yes, you know, they weren't treated in the most appropriate way, but it was for a disease that nobody knew how to treat. And um, I'm sure some of those ventilators were poorly made from China and I am have, I'm suspicious of that. However, let's just say the cases were being vastly overrated, but the deaths were close to accurate. And we had these death rates back then of worldometers was at a 16%. The United States was at a 12 and 15 percent. And I mean early in this, like in March, I was already looking at the United States statistics on world meters of closed cases at around 16 percent. So, um, of course, that's closed cases, but you can't look at open case percent death when it's doubling every other day or when the cases are doubling every three days or doubling every four days. You can't com look at the open case death rate and say, oh, it's 1%. Um, because <laughs> it takes orders of magnitude longer to heal from the virus than it does to catch the virus. If, you know, the numbers of new cases are doubling and tripling every few days, but the death rate isn't yet because we're in a surge, just wait. You know, you have to wait. Like you have to look at the closed, that's why I like looking at the closed case death rate. And I hate to say this as far as, you know, the daily deaths have decreased, but we also had a decrease in the spread for like a month or so, right? The country just went like it, it, 
it we were still getting new cases but we weren't like getting more new cases each day than we had the previous day we were getting less new cases each day than we had the previous day right and so the death rate kind of became probably more accurate toward the end of that time but now that we're surging again the death rate's not going to be accurate so there's a lag is what i'm trying to say there's a lag so according to the closed case death rates that i've been looking at it did not go down by tenfold it went down by about four percent um excuse me yeah from like it was like 16 worldwide and it was like it was really high it was so high it was a really high death rate of closed cases um but they were marking extra deaths so it was just like how do you how do you know so the question that we need to be asking is like are they doing the same thing now now I think they know that those heart attacks and those strokes and those liver failures and kidney failures are from COVID and they should be counted. But are they still doing this, you know, this car accident died from COVID thing? I just don't know. And we just can't determine what the real death rate is until there's more information. I like to look at the data and not assume that it's all just one big lie. I assume that there's a margin of error and perhaps certain individuals may be being disruptive but I don't assume that every single person that reported into that system is a big fat liar and I can't look at the data at all. Um, the Bible says do not assume everything is a conspiracy. Like we have to have some basis to look at things, okay? And so I, I implore people who are starting to believe everything is a conspiracy, you know, if you're believers, then take note of that. Look it up, that's a real verse. So we have to be careful what we think is a conspiracy. So I think the death rate on Worldometers, if you check it out, worldometers.info, is maybe the most accurate that we could have. The Florida COVID dashboard is not being updated properly. They just now updated it three or four weeks late, showing the percent positive of lab tests is through the roof up to 16%. They're delaying it, they're delaying it. Um, so it's sad, but I just, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. How can we really know? And so people that say it's just a flu, the death rate's the same as the flu, would you wear a mask for the flu? You know, those are okay questions, um, but it's just a flu is something that you cannot know without data. And I've noticed that a lot of people um, discount the data and then say that. But if you discount the data, you have to understand the case rate could be inflated and the death rate could be inflated. Um, the open case rate is way different than the closed case death rate. And <laughs> so it's just, it's just more complicated than that. You know? Uh, Angel, did I knock over the incense? Angel, sorry. Well, if that got your attention, then go ahead and please just give the video a like and please comment. Tell me what you think. You know, if you're a statistician especially, that'd be really cool. I'm such a nerd. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Like, have you been tested? How was your experience with the test? Are you one of those people where you're like, how in the world did I test positive? Like, tell your stories below because I'm interested in knowing. And please subscribe to the channel.